this is a handover of the rock and roll signature camera. So at the back of the van you do have your main hook up point, so to hook the vehicle up with mains electric, get your hook up lead, lift the collar, lift the flap on the van, hook the motor home up first, then the power source and do it in reverse order when hooking so that you never fall out with a live lead. Next to it you have your fresh water tank. So on the keys you've got a little habitation key which is your fresh water cap because it's lockable. Pop your holes in there so carry your holes and hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just to brass tap on site and fill your fresh water. Once it starts overflowing, you know your tank is full. That is your dirty water system, which is just further down here. So that pipes your waste. Put a little bucket on underneath the van just to collect that dirty water that you're putting out your kitchen sink. At the back of the vehicle, you've got your parking distance sensors. This customer has had a detachable tow bar fitted so they don't come standard with a tow bar. This is a cost option you can have when purchasing a rock and roll camper with us. External shower which is cold water only. But you connect your bullfinch fitting to here. As long as you turn the pump on you'll get a pressurised flow of water. And then underneath you've got your gas cage so this takes a Campton gas 907 gas bottle and to connect it all you need to do is it's a bayonet so it's a screw on fitting you'd screw your bottle onto here tighten it and then turn the gas supply on with the red nozzle on the top once you've put your bottle on tie it in turn it off before you do start traveling and always make sure the gas cage is sealed in case you do Won't escape the cage for any reason. Underneath, you've got some storage, but this is where you'll find the location of your diesel heater. And then, as we come round to the passenger side of the motorhome, you've got your fuel and your add blue, so 19 litres on a transit custom. It'll come on the dash when it needs add blue. You can buy it on the pumps or you can buy it in the drums and top it up. But top it up as soon as the light comes on. Otherwise, you can go to restriction mode, which is limb mode, and it'll restrict the engine to 50 mile an hour max speeds to protect you. You'll find your weight weight here, so you can find your gross vehicle weight, your train weight, front and back axle weights on the sticker on the passenger door. And to release the bonnet, big lever here beside the passenger footwell. Pull that up. You'll be able to have a look underneath the bonnet. So you've got your screen wash, your brake fluid, your oil filler, and your dipstick here for checking your levels. Coolant on that side. Give the receiver jump start. Positive off here underneath the red cover and you'd earth off the engine hoist here on the side of the engine. Yeah. So once on board the vehicle, you've got your control panel here. So you've got your master switch, which is your on off. So it'll turn on 12 volt from the leisure battery. Obviously if you are hooked up, then you will get mains voltage, 240 volt through mains live. Leisure battery reading, vehicle battery reading, but you always want the blue light to be on the leisure battery as this is the designated battery to use for the camper van side instead of using the vehicle battery and drain your forward battery. You've got your pump which you need to have on for your taps and outside shower point and you've got your master switch for your lights. They are all then individually switched around the van. 
12 volt USBs here, so two of them. Standard USB, standard 12 volt point there, sorry. And two 240 volt sockets and you've got a wireless charging. So if your phone takes wireless charging, you can put it on there and it will charge. And then to heat the vehicle, you've got a diesel heater. So with a diesel heater, you need to make sure that you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more for it to work, because the diesel take for the heater is a lot higher than the diesel intake for the engine, just to stop you from draining the tank of diesel if you were parked up for a week or so. But to start the heater, you just press here, to go up starting, and you can adjust the temperature on the heater. So this is the ventilation, and then temperature. So you can see there, it's set at 20 degrees, and you can go up and down to adjust the temperature. To turn it off, you just press and hold. That'll say stop, shutting down, and that is the heater turning itself off. So in the kitchen area, you do have two gas burners. Tells you the size of pans you can have in millimetres, so 150ml on there and 80ml on here, max size of your pans, just so that the pan does get warm and you're not putting too much strain on the burner because it will take longer to heat the bigger pans. Grill, grill pan in the wardrobe there, but that's your grill. Got some storage underneath, storage to the side. Cutlery drawer, cold water tap, as you've got water in the tank, and then to operate your fridge, which is a compressor fridge, and it's 12 volts, so it works off your leisure battery. So no, so just making sure you've got enough charge in your leisure battery, no matter if you're wild camping or you're on a site, your fridge will work. But to turn it on and off, you put your on-off button here. Blue lights will come on, and the bigger the snowflake, the colder the fridge. So you've got warm and setting, press and hold until it goes right down to the bigger snowflake, which is the colder setting. So you can adjust the temperature of your fridge according to how cold the fridge becomes once it's been pre-chilled on full cold temperature first. Little freezer box, which is removable should you need the extra space. And you turn it off here leave it open when you're not using it so that so that the fridge vents and that the smell doesn't form with the airtight rubber seal hitting the frame so with the bed before we put the bed down what we'll do is we'll show you the seat so if you lift this handle here you can adjust the seat so if you're sitting in it you don't have to sit so far upright you can recline the seat so that you're more comfortable inside the van when sitting inside the vehicle now to do the bed you just lift this handle up free it of the bar and pull it out so you might want to just pull the extra seat belts out pull it out and it'll slot down. That'll create your double bed downstairs and then when you're ready to put the bed back up, there's a handy handle here. Pull it up, slide it. It's up to you how far you have the seat reclined. You can have it all the way up, but you can have it reclined to its fullest. But just make sure that when you're traveling, it is up to a certain degree. Don't have it so far back, the passengers at the back. Seat belts are underneath, so you just need to fish the belts out, and you do have two belts on the seat, along with two USBs beside there, so they can charge any devices when travelling in the back. The extra two berth is, it can be found in the pop top, where you've got a mattress. So this is a, your pop top with windows at the front. So you've got three windows, two on the sides and one on the front. And then for extra headroom, push here and push the roof up when not in use. 
and you can stand up inside the vehicle. So to put the pop top down when you're ready to drive off, first of all pull the roof down and then there's two handles on both sides of the pop top, get a hold of them and start to pull the roof down but make sure that you've got the sliding door open to allow the vacuum out of the vehicle otherwise it will be very strong to pull this pop top down and you'll not be able to pull it down. So pull it down in, pull the canvas in both sides front and back. and roll the front one over slightly so that you can pull the roof down all the way and then you want to tighten your strap so some people take these straps completely off what I do is I just push pull it to the very end of the strap allow the roof to go up and then slightly tighten it as this it gives more stability to the front of the pop top and it stops it from rattling in the wind so it just adds a little bit of torque to the front of the pop top but when you're ready to drive away you've got to put these back on so push the catch in pull that tight and pull it in on both sides you can then use the access strap to go around the middle of it if you want or you can just roll it up slide it into the sides of the roof out the way so it's not going to fall on your head when you're traveling and then you do have the hideaway pop top facility so if you push that out there it gives a headline and feel at the front of the van and stops the draft coming in off the pop top okay in the wardrobe area you can find the location of your ec 155 power supply unit so you've got your 12 volt fuses here so carry some spare fuses with you in case the fuse does blow you can replenish the fuse tells you down here the ratings and what fuse does what and you've got your rcd and your mcbs on electric and then underneath this cover here you've got the location of your fresh water little tank so this is what fills up from outside, so you've got about 10 litres in there of fresh water on board at any one time.